They've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Great intro right there with the Elbing. And I gotta tell you right now, this is a awesome, awesome video displaying the power and the capabilities of what this German destroyer really has. And I think it's been taken for granted or forgotten. And I think honestly, this is one of the best destroyers in the game right now. But before we begin, like, hey, appreciate all those who have supported the channel. We are growing like a wildfire right now. And I'm very, very impressed and thankful and grateful. Happy holiday season to everybody. And thank you again for supporting the channel. On our way to 900 subscribers, ultimate goal is 1,000. And you guys are making it happen right now. But we're also having a blast learning about sailing ships, shooting ships, and having fun at the same time, building community and having really really awesome battles and uh, learning something from it at the same time so let's talk about the elbing what is it by the way it's a tier 10 tech tree line uh elbing tier 10 if you will german destroyer with big guns big armor big everything i mean this is i i, I dare to say it the hulk of destroyers right now and it's probably one of the strongest destroyers i've played in a while and i took it for granted i didn't play it for a long time until i randomly took it out in clan battles just to see what i could do with it and i honestly have to say this is one of the most powerful destroyers in the game for clan battles ranked in perhaps maybe even randoms and i haven't tried it in randoms yet I'll, I'll try it a little bit more and see what i get from it but uh, I'll give you a rundown right now. It's the guns. The guns are laser beams that shoot 2.0 Sigma that literally are deadly accurate, 150 millimeter guns that go really, really fast, really, really far, and they just hurt. Now, watch this. So you have a Moskva right here, full broadside right here. Here is the secret to the sauce of what this thing can really, really do. And look at the distance, look at the range, and look at that. Did you just see that, ladies and gentlemen? Three Citadels right off the first shots, cold bore shot that is, and another Citadel. And we are literally racking down the a, uh, the damage on the Moskva who's going, what the crap is going on right now? And literally he's firing at us. And you know, have you noticed, like when you get a cruiser and all these other guys shooting at you that you're a bigger threat than battleships and cruisers combined? That tells you how mon a monstrosity this thing is. And there he goes, one down. That is because we literally took the brute force of it, and also we were tanking like a battleship, we were dealing out damage like a battleship, and we were obviously doing everything we can to help spot for our team move forward, also DD hunt as well as torpedo hunt and everything. So let's run down while we flank this Yamato over here. What is the power of this destroyer, the armor? Look at, look, first of all, the survivability, 34,400. You can build it to 34,000 HP. That is borderline light cruiser right there, but you're classified as a DD. The guns are big. 150 millimeters, as you just saw, wipe out a Moskva, who let our team mop up the rest of the damage right there. And then you have also the armor plating on the side, which is 25 millimeter plating, which most destroyer guns cannot penetrate that, okay? So you have an advantage right there. If most of the destroyers you're facing have guns can only penetrate 21 or 19 millimeters armor, that is a major problem. They're going to have to aim a little bit more for super structure and nose and um, aft sections of your ship to get major hits. But look at this. Okay, watch the damage we're outputting on the Yamato. 17 penetration hits, and we're doing 36 to 4,000 damage per salvo, and we're getting about a four and a half second reload. Look at that, 3,500 damage to 4,000 damage total right there. 
Six shells going in. Not doesn't seem like much, but look, when the Yamato is firing at a destroyer, that tells you that you are putting a major, major threat on the battlefield, which makes this destroyer almost borderline OP. I mean, you are literally drawing fire from everybody when you have four or five other ships shooting at him and he elects to shoot you. So think about that for a second. And boom, splash one, RIP back to Porty. Yamato goes down. And we take the first kill from a battleship perspective. We take one of those down, also destroying this flank like it's nothing. Just moving through it like butter now. Swiss cheese, if that is. And we're going to go ahead and continue the push as our team is pushing like a... A combined single force, which I really like leading a team like that, where we're all working together, concentrating, focus firing, and that's how you win clan battle games. And here is another section of the ship right now, the torpedoes. They only go about 50-ish knots, if you will. Look how slow they are, but look at the range. 13 kilometer range. It's insane. Uh, almost as the same range as the gun. So you can shoot these, fire and forget, let them travel the distance, whatever. And they're, gonna, they're German torpedoes, but whatever. But they still are a wall of death coming at whatever's in front of you right now and the reload is pretty great as well it's got smokes if you need it and it's got the defensive a which is nerfed anyways it doesn't matter but anyways the power of what you're seeing right now is literally the guns we are flanking a petro yes the petro is literally full broadside to us we are firing long range here and we are taking literally about 3,000 damage. And again, nobody is firing at our team but us, which means we are posing a major, major threat to our adversaries here. Again, aiming at the waterline of the ship, making sure the shells hit the center of his hull right there. Look at that, 5,300 damage. And another cool thing, we have the smoke. We can hide behind it, and our armor is helping protect us, but not that one, by the way. And you got to be very, very careful against... Uh, continuous salvos from a cruiser because you cannot take that much damage but again you are taking damage that that is a crazy thing to do in a destroyer as well as that 34,000 hp allows us to tank much of the damage for our team meanwhile continuously shooting spotting smoking everything we can do all while firing torpedoes as well as spotting and capping in the meantime but look at the firepower that we're bringing on this petro he has no idea which one to shoot at and what to do because we are constantly putting shells to his side and this thing is literally a flanker it can really go the distance goes to flank use the guns i almost want to say this is kind of like Kleber kind of gameplay style uh with that minus the speed but better concealment the thing i really has got it working for it is the concealment the concealment as you can see as i pop out of the smoke 6.5 that is a great concealment because it's right in the middle there of just decent enough where you can go in, cap, spot, and even take on destroyers if you have to. I think it's, I have some other gameplay footage where this thing literally can take on destroyers easily, not only with HE or AP. The, the, the guns are literally laser beam focused, very high powering alpha damage that really does i would say that the work of every single row for a destroyer a cruiser and perhaps even a battleship's role of just being able to just sit at all cruisers from broadsides and take on battleships as well i'm very surprised and impressed that these guns can deal the damage they can do against battleships as you saw earlier with the yamato a very very powerful adversary to play in full broadside stalling guy you got to take advantage of this this is literally what this thing was designed to do and boom oh man we got robbed right there Hopefully these shells connect and get us at least one Citadel and we don't get any, but that would have been very, very nice and juicy to see. We only have 1,500 damage, so we're going to have to be careful about what we decide to do with the rest of our HP and, and our ship. Uh, the, um, let's see here, the Alpha Cap, I believe, that where we started at is getting capped. Well, hold on. Actually, forgive me, that's the Bravo Cap where we started. That has already been capped by their destroyer, their, their Kleber. Again, that Kleber is kind of like our rival of what it's supposed to do uh, in the rolls, but we have more HP and we have less speed. So that's the only downsides of that. Uh, we're gonna come back here and get the Stalingrad. Now, if he radars us, we're done. So we're gonna have to basically shoot these torpedoes as preemptive strikes here and be very, very careful and angle away. We gotta get away from this thing so he doesn't use his guns to destroy us as he um, recharges his radar. The rest of our team's gonna go ahead and take on the middle, as I told him to do, while we flank the Stalingrad. Again, this tactic right here is what the L building excels at. It's slow, it's clunky, but it, if you get it slow and steady and just go off to the flanks, it can do 
and run the damage really, really well. So right now, I'm praying that the Stalingrad is not moving its guns. He is. Look at that. He is now looking at us. He goes, hey, you're more of a juicy target than anybody else right now. So why not? So we're going to run away, angle away, and get away from his radar right there. It says his radar is about 12 kilometers. I always use the math of, hey, Soviet radar is always 12 kilometers. Okay, we get away right there. I think it ran out since we're still within 11.4. Our torpedoes look like they may connect. So what we're going to do is keep the distance, keep the smoke in between us. We'll slow down right now, go in full reverse. Hopefully somebody spots for us right now. But since all of our team is behind islands, we, we got a nice torpedo hitter there. Since we cannot see him and nobody's spotting for us, the rest of our team's moving full north, we're going to go ahead and spot for our team. Meanwhile, we know his radar's down. We can actually push out in our concealment's great, 6.5. And let's see if we can get this thing full broadside. Now, it only takes maybe about a few salvos to sink the Stalingrad if we get a nice, juicy broadside. So again, this is the tactic right here where the Elbing really, really, really excels at right now is this flanking maneuver, um, spotting, torping, as well as gunboating. Again, who does he spot right now? Our... Puerto Rico now is actually firing. Oh, and he takes tons of damage off the Stalingrad. This is so tempting to do right now. I so want to put a full broadside into him, but you know what? Let's let our teammates get it and not risk our HP. Again, This is that was all about... You know, basically patience and waiting for the right moment. Okay, now, Clabert's not looking at us. We're going to go ahead and open fire on him. Hopefully, his guns are not looking. We're going to see if he's getting nice hits on him. He's going fast, so we got to lead him a little bit more. And look at that. 1,300 damage on it. And Clabert's woken up and said, hey, you know what? The bigger threat right now is... Ooh, he got stuck right there. And that cost us our shots right there. Oh, and he's, he fired at us. We are a bigger threat to him than the Petro, even though he launched torpedoes. He would rather shoot at us, and he would be right, because you know what? If he takes us out of the game, that is a major win for them, because we are the deadliest thing on the battlefield for him. Let's see if we can get this one more shot. Can we get him? And boom, he gets us. Oh, with a lucky shot right there. RNG was praying for him, but you know what? It's okay. He is pretty much down for the count because they only have two ships left. But again, pros and cons about the Elbing right now. I think the Elbing is incredibly, incredibly powerful for Kalan battles. I would recommend you try it. Really look at the powers and capabilities and tactics, what the Elbing can bring. It's got great guns, great torpedoes that are not fast, but they do have range. It's got great armor for against DDs. It can tank a lot. It's got 34,000 HP, great Sigma, great um, uh, accuracy, great speed on the guns. Uh, good reload speed. They're decent for the size caliber they are. Uh, downsides are it's a little clunky and slow, like most German DDs are, but however, and you don't get any hydro. So those are some of the downsides you can, but you know, saw how we made it work, how we could use our pros and our, our strengths to help our team move into position and win the game. So those are my thoughts on the Elbing. Let me know what you think. I'm going to try the Elbing out in randoms. Uh, that's because I think that's what most people like to use, but I think this is still a powerful power. 170,000 damage with tons of citadels, a ton of damage, and hey, we are great for spotting our team and making it work. So hope you guys have a great holiday season. We'll talk to you guys soon. And thanks again for all the support. Like, subscribe, bell button below, and see you guys next time. Cheers.